So I'm tempted not to do this video here today because I want to open up to you, show you some stuff I've never shown to you before. And there's a message behind why I'm doing this. Because I think sometimes when people win, you forget where you were at one point. You start believing all the hype. You get cocky and then boom, that's when you get caught. Um, you know, when I was 21 years old, I was making good money. I was the speaker on the, these yachts and people would come to hear me speak in Newport Beach and girls and all these girlfriends and partying in Vegas and all this stuff. And then boom, I lost everything. One month I was depressed. I was living in my apartment. I don't want to talk to anybody. Self-esteem, you know, insecure. I was just embarrassed. Everybody saw me at the top and I had a massive fall. And, uh, you know, I told myself, if I get a second chance, man, I'm not going to do the same way I did the first time around because I'm going to change. And so I'm going to be uh, very careful of not getting cocky. I'll be confident, but not cocky. Not arrogant, assertive is fine. And I'll be uh, uh, about the people, about everybody else I'm working with, because that's what really matters. And then eventually your own dreams and goals will become a reality. So let me show you some of this stuff so you know what this stuff is to me. I like to document my life in a different way. Some people do it with video, Instagram, Facebook, Snap, which is great. I kept a lot of things. This right here has a lot of meaning to me. This is the game Donkey Kong. Let me tell you why this is a lot of meaning to me. Back in the days when I was living in Iran, I lived on a street called Hojet, Khyabana Hojet. And on the corner of Khyabana Hojet, there was a store that sold video games and they had this one. I would always go to my dad and say, dad, I want to buy that game for me. Buy it for me. He says, no, I'm not buying it. Why not? You got to go talk to the owner. I'm not talking to the owner. You're paying for it. If you don't talk to him, I'm not buying it for you. I wouldn't talk to the guy for two months. Finally, I did. He bought it for me. This isn't the original one, but my sister bought one and said it to me two years ago. Obviously, I haven't played it, but every time I look at it, I think about that moment. Uh, this is a pipe. My uncle was a big pipe guy. He just died three months ago, but this pipe tells me a lot about the memories I had with him. This is a wallet. This is the first expensive wallet I bought. It's a Hugo Boss wallet, 80 bucks. I mean, 80 bucks is nothing. You can buy a $1,000 wallet nowadays. But this was a big deal because to me, it was like, wow. Rather than buying these $5 wallets, now you bought an $80 wallet. You know how much story I have with this wallet? This was given to me the month I left Germany by my classmates. I was 12 years old. Um, look at the date. November, let me see if I move my finger. November 1990. I came to America November 20th, 1990. You know what's in there? Everybody's stories, pictures, their ideas, their hobbies, my friendship with them. I look at this, it takes me to a really nice place in my life. Uh, this book, this is the story of Shah. When I was born in Iran, he was still the king of Iran. I was born October of 78. He was in exile three months later, but when I was born, he was a Shah. I don't remember anything about this guy because I was a newborn baby. But I probably read this book, I don't know how many times I've read this book. He told this book, he wrote this book before he died. And so what I did after this book, I went and bought every single Time magazine he was ever on, okay? Let me show you some of these magazines. You know, Iran in turmoil. Date, September 18th, 1978. I was born four weeks after that. Iran in anarchy, Exodus. February 26, 1979. I was four months old. Okay? Again, Iran in turmoil. I buy every one of these things when I find them. Uh, Time magazine, December 18, 1978. The toughest, Shah's toughest test. I was two months old. The center of storm. December 10th, 1979, uh, about a year and two months old, okay? The Emperor's Oil, 1974. This is when Iran was strong in the Middle East. There was no war, everything was at peace. This right here, um, it's probably a thousand cars with these in LA. God bless America. Uh, when Morgan Stanley wouldn't give up my license, I bought these at $2 and sold them for 10 bucks. This paid my bills when my license was being transferred for like three, four months. Uh, this is the first time I got a hold of Tony Robbins said I would listen to this. This is old school. If you've seen this great, but this is like video cassette. I'd listen to it over and over again. This was given to me in July on July 18, 2009 by a bunch of people I work with. And uh, back in the days at a sales organization, we call ourselves the story builders. There's stories here from all these different people in my life that they wrote. Every once in a while I sit there and I just read them and I just read them. Many of them are no longer in my life, but every one of them has a place in my heart because there's a story to it, right? This is the first time a major publication did a story on me. Denver Post. Home buying. Try some extreme logic. That's me with that orange French connection sweater I have on, okay? Um, <laughs> let me show you some other stuff. This is the first website I ever made. 
the story builders. You know why this is important? My best friend who's no longer with us, Armin Arakelian, wrote a story there. If you know the story, you know exactly what it's about. This was my first workout shirt I bought when I was 14 years old, 24 hour fitness. See the one I have on? This was made by Valutainer. But this is the original one. Check this one out, okay? Look how ripped it is, the armpits, okay? See it? Ripped, ripped. Didn't have a lot of money, man. We came from very simple background. Everything is ripped on this. The back is even ripped. And I would wear it ripped to work out. People say, Pat, why are you doing this? I say, look, this is legit stuff. I'm working out. This is the book I bought for my wife a day after we went on our first date. 101 questions to ask before you get engaged. This is the original one with my original answers, embarrassing answers. And I kept it. Why? Maybe one day my kids are going to want to read this and realize how crazy their dad is. It's my last license from California. Why? California's got a place in my heart. This Bible was given to me. Let me tell you why this is so important. Some of you guys that know and heard me tell this story before, this is that Bible. I was an atheist, 25 years of my life. When I was in the army, they gave us the opportunity to go for a camp by a lake. And we had to do Bible study every night for one hour. I was like so annoying. This man would speak, he would speak monotone. I was just a bad kid, temper, all that other stuff. At the end, he comes and gives me this Bible. He says, this Bible was given to me by mom and dad on December 25th, 1974. Son, I think you need this more than I do. <sighs> Prayed every single day, three times a day to God I didn't believe existed. Literally, this shirt here, okay? When I was broke, bought these in downtown LA for two bucks a pop. Osama, your mama during 9-11. I'd sell these for 15 bucks a pop. You know why I kept all this stuff? Everyone, I, there's so many other things in front of me. I'm not gonna go through all of them, be honest for like 30 minutes. I will never forget where I came from. And every single time you have massive victory, like you're coming up hardcore and you're making millions, you have to realize, um, just like everything was given to you, the moment you get cocky is when you get caught. The moment you're no longer prepared is when you get caught. The moment you think this is gonna continue, you're untouchable, that's when somebody takes it away from you. And so if you're watching this and you're on the rise, like you have nothing, you're like, Pat, I wish I had a sh you know, $5,000 in a bank account, let alone you know millions. Look, whatever you're doing, document by keeping everything. I've kept every single one of my credit scores. Check every single thing because one day you're gonna tell that story to your kids, to your family, and somebody else you're gonna inspire. But if you're winning and you're watching this and you're catching yourself, your language sounds a bit cocky, go back and sit down and go through some of your old stuff and remember that you used to suck at one point. You used to have nothing at one point. You used to be depressed at one point. You used to have insecurities at one point. You lost a girl. You lost your savings. You lost a job. You got fired. Don't get too cocky. Be grateful. Be confident. Be assertive. Keep working on yourself. Outwork. Outimprove. Outstrategize. Outlast. And success will continue. But if you don't, it'll go to somebody else who appreciates success and is gonna show up on a daily basis. It's a simple message to, different, to two different types of people. Those on the rise and those who are all the way at the top, looking down, feeling it, confident. And they don't realize there's another mountain to go to. But if you wanna go on that other mountain, you ain't gonna get up there, acting the way you are right now. You gotta recreate yourself to be able to get to the next level. And if you do, you get to the next level. You don't, you ain't gonna stay where you're at. You drop, because you had to move up or you go down. You never stay in the same place. It's my message of the week to you. By the way, let's have a killer week this week, okay? Love you, bye-bye.